tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh, I totally forgot. Fly like an I eagle wanted seal. to come in to fly. To the sea, fly like an eagle. Let your spirit catch you free. I want to do it. I can't do it. Like an eagle. Welcome to Monday Night Football After Buzzers. I'm your host, Christina Kaplan. I'm joined by. I'm Kevin John, and always so happy to be here. And I'm Steph Z. Thanks for listening. She's extra happy to be here today (laughs) because the Jets won. We won. Oh, there it is. There it is. Steven, you're the best ever. I just got to tell you that. We didn't even just win. We beat the Steelers. Into and I the have future. on my spirit fingers. Oh, my. God. Just because this might be the only other game we win this season. So I did it. My best friend made me used to go to the Jets game. I'm just curious. How long, have, how long have those been in storage gathering dust waiting for you to bring no, them No, look. It's, it's, it's falling off. But it's there, man. It's there. It's barely there. So basically. Hey, man. Fans, why you can't enjoy these spirit hands because it could be another three years before she brings those out. True. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, but I just wanted to. We usually bash the Jets. This week, we can congratulate them because they got a big win over the Steelers, who were on a roll. Big Ben had two six touchdown games in a row, and then you guys uh, stopped him. Can, 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 yeah. Is Michael Vick back? I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, he played amazing. The te- it was like a different team. Like, literally, it was so funny. I got a text, like, it, like the end of first quarter, and someone wrote, did the Steelers and Jets change uniforms? Like, it was just really <laughs> funny. It was hysterical, and I can take it, and I love it. But I, I think it's, I'm hoping, I don't know, maybe it was a fluke, but, you know, once once you get that bad, once you're one and eight, man, you got to do something to change. And yeah. I feel like, I feel like the play are more excited to play for Michael Vick. Yeah. Um, I feel like they think they have more of a chance in winning with Michael Vick over well, Geno Smith. Well, he's a leader. He's, he's a, a proven leader. leader. He's a proven leader, and he's got balls. Right. And you um, know, another he does a, a nice sack. Actually, that sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> just, and, oh, and I, I don't know where. <laughs> yeah, just excuse that. I don't know where I was going. He has a nice sack of a brain sack, in order you to... You can't save that. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back there. It's, just keep it's, moving forward. It's done. <laughs> Ta- this is the part where you take my microphone. Uh, yeah, anyways, what so I will we're say, only like, what, three minutes know, in and it's already time to take your microphone? <laughs> Hopefully the viewers started tuning into this like maybe five minutes into the broadcast so they didn't see it. But anyways, yeah. no, what I was going to say um, is that a win like this, even though Vic wasn't entirely just out of the uh, world impressive... A win like this, what it does is it gives confidence to a pretty much a tumultuous season that the Jets have been having. It's going to give the players confidence. It's going to give Vic confidence. And who knows, if they win out, they can actually end up at 500 for this season. So Right. And, and the thing is, though, the flip side of that, which we've seen in previous seasons with the Jets, is that Geno Smith should just go somewhere else. Because his confidence at this point in time has to be shattered. So if they actually start him again... It's just there's no there's no up. It's kind of what happened to Mark Sanchez, who we will see you know a lot of his story tonight, and now he's somewhere else and he's doing good. But who knows? It's his first game he started. Whatever. We'll talk about that. But now it's like Geno Smith's like, okay, you guys didn't want to play me, and and I sucked, and then I sucked again, and now you're Michael Vick and you're winning, and the fans will be pissed. First of right, all, but so, it's one game, so real. Who do they play next? We play the Bills. We have a bye this weekend, and then we play the Bills. Okay. And then we play Monday Night Football against the Dolphins. Okay. 
And the Dolphins had that impressive win over what team was that? Where they shut them out? It was like thirty-seven to zero or something like that. I the believe Dolph it was San. Oh, oh the, 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 it's, uh, the, the uh, lightning bolt. Yeah, the lightning. The, the uh, bolt. It's yellow, and they're yellow, yellow and blue. Navy. I think they're from um, California. The oh, the Chargers! Chargers. Oh, Thanks, man. guys. I, I man. totally had forgotten about that loss. I know. I know. This bye week we had here. But we're here to help you remember that. Thank yes. you. And be a place of comfort Thank where you. you can, you know. Appreciate that. Yeah. So you Man. Tina, we're here for you. We're here for you. Oh my God, I'm you know, chill, man. Um, you would be dead. It's all good. I mean, we're number two um, behind the Broncos, and you guys are never going yeah. to come number one in front of the Broncos. You just you you have to accept that the best for you guys is a wild card burr. Yeah, that's what I accept. Um, <laughs> hey, I'll take a wild card. Yeah. <laughs> Speak, speaking of speaking of teams, you know, you talked about your Jets. We just kind of lightweight bashed the Chargers, even though they're a great team. Yeah, but man, thirty-seven to zero. I have no idea how that happened. They were like a Pop Warner team that night. But anyways, I have to say that my team, the San Francisco 49ers, put up an impressive win against the New Orleans Saints in the Dome. They went to the Superdome. Can I just say, say an impressive win rather than they almost lost? They I started agree. out strong, I and agree. Then it was like, oh shit, what's happening? We gotta pull this one out. And can I just say they that I really think that that offensive pass interference by Jimmy, Jimmy Graham was. No. Questionable. He, he because, his... no, because the 49ers defender, whoever it was that was on him, was like a fucking. Oh, I said it again. Oh my <laughs> God. That's he was a, passion. You're he was passion. a Vladi Divok flopper. Like, she said Vladi Divok. She yes, took it back. I took it back to the original flopper who. <laughs> Is the like king of flopping? That's what it looked like. He barely touched him, and he flopped, and that's why the refs called it. I feel like that catch was amazing. Like, really? But let me let me ask you this. You 100% agree that that was a offensive pass okay, interference? But in the rule book, does it say no. barely touch? Does it say touch with all of your might? The rule book of offensive yeah, pass interference is when you use hands book. illegally in order to create separation to get open, that's, whether you're pushing them, yeah, whatever, you whether you. Barely push him, or you push him with all force. It if was that offensive. call was against your team, right now all we would hear about is that you guys lost the game no, because of that know, call. You know why that call wouldn't be against my team? Because my team doesn't cheat like that in the bottom. We, we don't have to pull plays oh like that in order God, to win. We they play with the utmost cheating. Integrity. There was three guys on him, and he <laughs> made a spectacular <laughs> catch. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, did. I will give that to you guys. Regardless, even if it was offensive pass interference, still. He embarrassed the Niners by still going up on three people and catching the ball. I get, I give that to him. And plus, Jimmy Graham is what the best tight end in the league behind Gronkowski. So I will give him that. The Niners should have never allowed that to happen. But at the end of the day, he did. The penalty was was called, right? And it was validated. So therefore, you know. But anyways, forget the penalty. Let's talk about Colin Kaepernick's game-winning drive in the fourth quarter. I mean, literally with a minute left, two minutes left, and it's fourth and ten. He's on the ninth. 18 yard line, and he makes the improbable play a long pass down to Michael Crabtree, about 30 to 40 yards down the field. And you just see the evolution of Colin Kaepernick. How this guy is not only a pocket passer, but he is also one of the most elusive quarterbacks in the league, actually, in front of Russell Wilson, that can make plays when the game is on the line. Booyah. All right, so Monday like night can. football. He's like, tonight <laughs> we had the Eagles against the Panthers. I just had to say that. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Kevin, for uh, well, her. We, we all talked about our teams. I, Yo, I man, if, I the, if the Niners go to the Super Bowl and the Jets don't, like, I'll root for you. I'll wear your Jerry Rice shirt that looks like Cru a Victor Cruz shirt. I will okay. come over and wear that. I, I don't know whether or not I'm more shocked about her <laughs> the Victor Cruz. I don't know whether or not I'm more shocked about you saying if the the Niners make the Super Bowl, or if the Jets don't, like the Jets actually have a legitimate chance to make no, the I Super Bowl. No, I said if the Jets do. Oh, if the Jets do make it, yeah, unless the Jets do. If, if the, the Jets, Jets make don't the Super do it, Bowl, then your I will get a tattoo of freaking Rex Ryan on my neck. Okay, give me that pinky. I is give it, you the pinky. If I, they make the Super Bowl, I will <laughs> tattoo oh, I just Rex really Ryan on my hope neck. that that right. happens <laughs> now. They win so much. That is how it. They don't have to win the Super Bowl. They just have to get there. They just have to get there. At, at least now people have a reason to want the Jets to go to the Super Bowl. Yes, yes. exactly. So. 
would never Brady happen. Out. Boom. Never. Anyways. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Yeah, let's talk about the Eagles and Panthers. Uh, the Eagles won 45 to 21. Oh, let's also talk about the fact. Oh wait, no, let's not. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that I Kevin know. was the only one that picked the Panthers, but I did too. Oh. Yeah. All right, right here, bro. Way to exactly. go, guys. Way we to go. Me and Steph, we win together, but we lose together as well. We did. True team. Apparently. True team. Um, yes, yeah, so like I said, 45 to 21. It was uh, it was over at halftime, let's be honest. It was over the, the third. Uh, second. I mean, there were two turnovers in the very beginning of the yeah. game that allowed for the Eagles to score 10 points. I'll put it like this. Once Daryl Sproles returned that punt for a touchdown, Which that kind of just, that was just kind of like the, you, you could hear the gasp yeah. on the Panthers' sideline. They're like, it's done. We can't come yeah. back. You know what was crazy to me is that it was so done, but clearly Clint, uh, Clam, Cam Newton was hurting. And he yeah. was just getting pumped. Well, he was sacked kept nine in. times tonight. Yeah, four by Connor Barwin. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, they kept him in. Well, Why? because they talked to Ron Rivera at the half and asked, oh, you know, oh, yeah, Pam Oliver reported about it that she, you know, she talked to him and he... Uh, Cam met with the trainer during halftime, but everything was fine. Like, there was nothing wrong. You know, of course, like, playing it off like nothing's wrong with him. He's perfectly fine. When it was visible that something was going on, like, he looked like he was in a little bit of pain. I mean, he's had that rib injury. He's got um, way more padding on there than any other quarterback yeah, right. I've seen. He was hobbling around like he had yeah. arthritis tonight. Yeah, I mean, but it, did you see some of those hits that he, he got, was enduring? He like, nailed. His time offensive time. line Damn. is horrendous. Uh, horrendous. I didn't even know if they were there tonight. I know. I thought it was just Cam and his receivers. I was like, is anyone blocking for totally. this? Totally. And and the interesting thing is the Eagles are ranked 22nd in defense. Their defense is ranked 22nd in the league right now. Well, so, sure after this game. <laughs> well, that's what I want to ask you. Let's just start off with that. Um, do you think that the Eagles defense proved that they are much better than 22nd in the NFL after tonight? Honestly, go ahead. I was going to say, it's, it's hard to say because the offensive line was so terrible. I mean, like, yes, they're good, and they took advantage of the situation, you know what I mean? But it's like, are they, I don't know, what are they going to do next next week against the Packers? Right. Is it going to be, are they going to look like they're 27? Well, I think the that's going to be the true test. I think so, too. Like, I think it's really hard to tell and to make assessments like that when paired against an offensive line that's so weak. Exactly. And, and that's it. the same exact thing I was going to say. You know, in order to really um, evaluate a defense, you have to put them up against a highly skilled offense to see how they do. And I just feel that this was an unfair match to determine Determine the strength of the Eagles defense. Right. Now, granted, like Steph said, they took advantage of a very right. weak offensive line and they executed extremely well defensively. Um, from interception returns to nine sacks to, to fumble. All, to fumble. Fumbles, I mean, they, yeah. they, they were causing havoc for yeah. the Panthers and uh, Cam Newton. But ultimately, I think it's unfair to say, oh, the Eagles deserve to be a top five defense or top ten defense. Well, I wouldn't it. say top five, but um, I think 22nd is a little low for them. Um, they've gone 21 straight games now with one or more takeaways, which is pretty impressive. Right. Um, tonight there were five turnovers. Um, mm -hmm. I think it resulted in five turnovers for 24 points. So, right. I mean, yes, the Panthers made a lot of mistakes, but I think, like you guys both said, the um, Eagles defense took advantage of those weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they don't. That's the key thing. Sometimes when you're playing, like, the defense – would play down to the offense or not try as hard. Of course they're trying, but you know what I mean? Like, And they were saying, too, uh, I forgot his name off the top of my head, number 59 on the Panthers. Uh, oh, LaRouche, uh, he the, was Defensive the Player of the Year. He was yeah. Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, uh, the he, oh, Keekly? Keekly, that's yeah. it. He was um, clearly, I mean, they were down by so much, and the energy and what he was doing on every play, like, he did not, it's like, I thought of the Goonies, like, Goonies never die. You know what I mean? Like, he just kept going at it, and even to, it's like there's players like that, and I feel like the Eagles' defense did that tonight because clearly they were so far ahead. They didn't have to play as hard for the whole game as they did, but they kept bringing it. Right. And, you know, I thought the thing that was just most just – just an atrocity for the uh, Panthers offensive line was there was actually out of those nine sacks I want to say there was at least three to four where the defender came in uncontested yes like was not right. even touched and had a straight route to yeah. uh, Cam Newton I was like you know 
it, that, that's just a breakdown in offense. You know, yeah. they, it, you, you know, even if you're, even if it's not the offensive line, if you're a running back, you still have to know who you're supposed to pick up and block right. when they're applying pressure. And I don't know whether it's bad communication, bad play calling, or just bad play altogether. But I think a little I, bit of both. Yeah, it, it was it was horrendous to watch. I was like, wow, you know, uh, the Jets could have put up a better d- uh, offensive I mean, you know, line gonna, effort. They than did that. Look, like the Panthers did look a little Jets like tonight. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> they did. And you know, the the you know with them having a bad offensive line, no protection for Cam Newton, forced him to kind of make these quick throws. He was kind of um, what's the word I'm trying to think of. He was just very he, he erratic. Didn't, yeah, I guess that's a good word to to describe it. He obviously was under a lot of pressure, so that is going to force you to make plays quick, you know, quicker. But I felt like he was under pressure. Cam Newton. Pressure is that the word you were looking for? Yeah. Duress. No, that's what Duress. I just said. Oh, I he you. was under pressure, oh, I, okay. and forced to make you know quick plays, and right. therefore kind of just throwing it around willy nilly instead of really you know being more concise like he usually is. Right. He didn't really have a lot of uh, mobility outside of the pocket, He, which is usually where one of his strengths. Um, it was just, I, I guess it's probably a mixture of the lack of offensive line protection and maybe he's hurting a little bit, but what did you guys think of his performance tonight? Well, see, this is the thing. And when you take a quarterback like, like, like Cam Newton, um, and and they, even Gruden made a very good comparison earlier. When you take these new quarterbacks that came in, <laughs> welcome, like a, yeah, we want to well. The smiley guy on the couch there, who's like a <laughs> this is our like special a guest, five year old in a, a candy store. <laughs> you, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> You okay, I'm just kidding. He looks like like a Japanese. He looks like a Japanese tourist that just landed in America. <laughs> Japanese tourist. He's just missing exactly. A That's what it was. I, I had it, you know, inspiration. That is moved to right. I love how we're all wearing black today too. Like we yeah. all planned this. Well, this I is... got on my Jets green. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying. I wear black every day. You miss yeah. my spirit. You know fingers. what I'm saying? I'm black enough. <laughs> Exactly. You missed my spirit fingers. Oh, did I? Yeah. What in the? Oh, hell no. As we How won. do you have a pom pom? Who'd you guys beat? The Steelers. Beat the Steelers, dude. The what Steelers, you, you guys been? suck. <gasps> we played good. They, they did had, you? They, they I, did. I had did they, they actually to the play Jets. perform? I had to hand it to them. They, okay. they did do a pretty. Okay, uh, like if we're yeah. going to talk about the Jets again, they don't have that bad of a team. <laughs> if you think of the makeup of that team, there's a lot of good players on that team. I think. If they can get a Michael Vick. Yep. There you go. Who's resurrecting his career? There you you know what? You know if what they I can get someone Tiny. stable job, at quarterback. I'm going to tie it back to Sanchez in this game. I don't know if you saw, they did like an interview with him, and he was saying that the Eagles are a much more offensive team rather than the Jets and Rex Ryan being, you know, coaching from a defensive end or whatever. And I feel like that's. One of the big things that you know Rex Ryan and Idzik butt heads about. So it's like seeing Sanchez, and again, I mean, I feel like some of the commentators tonight wanted to give Sanchez MVP. The way that they were talking him up to me was slightly ridiculous. And it's not just because I'm a sour fan and like he's playing good. Like he had a good game. He looked awesome tonight. I will give that to him. But he looked awesome for us for two years too. You know what I mean? So it's just it's very. It, it was very, going back. So your and point forth is like he's kind of fresh right now. Well, over my there. point is that the Jets. Well, what we were tying it back in with the Jets playing against the Steelers. It's that they played an offensive game and we got touchdowns and we're so used to defensive. So I feel like and Michael Vick coming from the Eagles has more of an offensive game, like head game. Yeah. So that's why you know mixing that two. <laughs> she said head game. I'm sorry. No, but you know what I mean. That's an inside joke. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I got you. <laughs> I'm sure my Vick would I not want to be known for his head game. Well, at least anyway, even because I talked about his sack earlier. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you for <laughs> evening us out, Steph. Yeah. There you go. Those two guys. Well, anyway, but that's what I was just saying. Like, it, it was funny seeing the whole rotation of, like, you know, Sanchez got hurt, then it was to Smith, then it was to Vic, Vic left, then it was to Foles, and he got hurt to Sanchez. It's like a whole yeah. circle of quarterbacks. Okay. It, came, it came around. But, you know, the one thing I'll say about Sanchez, Sanchez, 
And you know, this is not to take anything away from him, but when he did win those two times with the or when they went to the AFC Championship, his first two years in the league, it was because he had a strong team supporting around cast. him. Yeah. He had a strong supporting cast. Like tonight, that was not a Sanchez win. That was a strong team win. Right. They scored right, how many points also, off the turnovers? He orchestrated it. He orchestrated I it. I give him he, that. The way he some of those balls, like that one ball, he put right. It, like he had some precise throws. You know, he Sanchez was threw for fifty four percent tonight, which is not that good for a quarterback. Right, but did you see McCoy drop three passes? Did you see, like, other things happen that weren't his fault? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that's no. kind of not a fair assessment. I'm not taking anything away from him. Two touchdowns, actually almost a third one, but he was down you on You know the... that the last time a quarterback, a starting quarterback with his first game scored 45 points? Was in it the, the 70s? No. No, it was in 19... 19- you should know this. Oh, yeah. Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh. 1994. In 94, yeah, for the Colts, yeah. yeah. You're right. So, um, a w- great way to say Segwayed into the Niners um, because I'm sure that's who we want to talk about. No, right now. no, I was no, waiting for that. But I'm just saying, I think Sanchez played very well. Okay, from that quarterback to what your initial question was yes. when you came in, Cam Newton. What I my assessment of Cam Newton, Newton is this: he's hurt. He, he's hurting, but this is the thing with Cam, and if he wants to have longevity in this in this field, he has to learn how to be a precise pocket passer, the three Ps. Those are the essentials. And if you look at the top five teams right now, um, in all of the league, not just NFC, AFC, you know, from um, from the Broncos to the Patriots uh, to, um, you know, the Cardinals. Bears. If Bears. If Sorry, you look at Lions. All those Bears. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Like the they were horrible last night. I was trying if, to catch you. Yeah. Thank the you. Lions. Lions. But if you look, that was smooth, too, because I almost fell for it. Yeah, I was you're just like, naming Bears? them all. And you were all through in Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville. But anyways, um, if you look at if you look at all those teams, they all have quarterbacks that are veterans, A, that have been around for a while, but B, are pocket passers. And these, these RG3s and these Cam Newtons are injury prone because they're exciting, they're electrifying, they're talented, they're dual threats, and they can do, they have all the... Intangibles and the specials, but unless Cam I, Newton, I unless it. Cam learns to become a pocket passer, you're not going to see him in his mid 30s like a Brady or a Manning. Oh, or, you're saying these RG threes, these Cam Newtons. I wouldn't put RG three and Cam Newton in the same category. Actually, I would put them both in the same category. Oh, they both came in around uh, a similar time. They both have a pretty similar game. I would say Cam is a little bit more precise passer than RG three. Extremely more precise. I, I would, would pick Cam all day long. All day RG3. long. And he knows how to. He's he's just better from to sit in the pocket. He just doesn't have the protection that he needs. Right. That's what I was gonna say. I, I feel like he's I disagree better, because if Cam Newton had a good I offensive agree. line, he would make those passes because he would yeah. have time. He was like kind of just hail marrying it and like chucking it up and hoping. Yeah. <laughs> like he some just of the long passes run. he made, yeah. so he has the ability to make them, but he was clearly hurt. He clearly has no offensive line, so he's making decisions quicker than he normally. He was there was no scanning. It was like, oh, I'm gonna get smushed. Let me throw the ball. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think he's a lot better than we saw tonight. And I would I do not think put him in hurt. the same category as RG3. No, I wouldn't either. No, so are you saying that RG3 is at the bottom of that list? They're both black enough, though. Well, that's, that's good to know because we're, we're definitely concerned about I don't about know if RG3 is black enough. Wait a minute. What, because he's married to a white woman? Is that no. why? No. <laughs> it's 2014. That's black enough. Well, it's, the real question is, is Russell Wilson black enough? Well, that was the that. question all along, wasn't it, that brought up this whole... First of all, what, what does it mean to be black enough? Can oh, someone God, define... we already had yeah, this Yeah, we already right. had this. Keep moving. I, I think that we all are in agreement that, besides you... Kevin, which is normal, that <laughs> RG3 and Cam Newton are not in the same category. They're what do you think, not. Christina? I, I agree with you guys. I think that if Cam Newton had better protection, if he had more time to make the passes, that he wouldn't look wouldn't have looked as bad as he did tonight. I agree. Um, I, He's RG3, a prototypical it's like, Oh, what would you say? He's a prototypical quarterback. Cam Newton? Yeah. yeah. Well, and no, Andrew Luck. Is a, and Andrew Luck was actually the best quarterback taken from the class of 2012 with all of them quarterbacks in there. But um, I'll say this. Mm. I, I would not put Cam Newton as your prototypical, prototypical pocket passer. I would not. Because he scores. You know, he also he had more rushing touchdowns as a quarterback, as a rookie, than any other. He had, like, what, 12 or 13 that year? It's ridiculous. You can check my stat. Well, stat. yeah, I mean, if he, if you know, Andrew Luck had the same line, then he's just he's gonna have to run, but he's just not gonna score those touchdowns. Whereas Cam Newton has the ability to actually do it. So you're it saying Andrew Luck benefits from having a good offensive line? There you go. Any quarterback does. 
Since Thank entering you. the league in 2011, Cam Newton ranks fourth with 30 rushing touchdowns. Only Marshawn Lynch, Adrian Peterson, and Arian Foster have more. Boom, and those are all running backs, which shows you that Cam Newton lives outside of the pocket more if he has 30 rushing touchdowns. But he can also throw the ball. He, can, he, he, he can can. also. Uh, yeah, I'm and, not taking that And away. he's a precise passer, and he can sit in the pocket. Which is why which is, he's more valuable yeah. than an RG3. Because he did have two 400-yard passing games he can, his first He two. can sit in the pocket. This dude can sit in the pocket. You have a line that gives him a little bit of time, give him a little bit of protection, and he'll prefer to sit in the pocket and make the reads and make the throw. Yeah. He wasn't he's running much at all tonight. Right. No, not <laughs> no, I agree. I mean, I think he's hurt, too. But I mean, there's a reason that this Panthers team went 12-4 and four last year and um, had a first-round bye in the playoffs. You know, they're, they're a great team led by a very good kid. Cam Newton. Right. But look at this team compared to that team. They have lost a lot of key exactly. players. No he doesn't really split. have anyone except yeah. Kelvin Benjamin, who's a rookie. That's the well, only had two touchdowns. Right, tonight. no, but he yeah. yeah, he's it was late in the game too, though. You know what I mean? It was like touchdowns, yeah. Right. So Garbage. like D'Angelo Will D'Angelo Williams has been injured. What, what's up with his pink hair, too? <laughs> Didn't, you know, know, he was inspired hair. by Wiz Khalifa. I know, I think no, so. Breast, yeah. breast cancer. Awareness. No, that was last month. Yeah, this month is just, Veterans he Month. He hasn't had a chance to make it back to the Didn't salon. Off yet. Maybe. The salon. Um, <laughs> he thought it was temporary. <laughs> right. Didn't rinse out. Didn't wash out. Greg Olson, Greg Olson had a good game, but, you know, he just doesn't have... I really think that letting Steve Smith go was the stupidest decision that they made. They're trying to plan for the future. I, I yeah. get that, but... That's, what, that's all that was. I think it was premature as well, but I think that's what they were thinking. Because I was going to say, Steven Smith, though he's a receiver, he is also one of the unsung heroes and leaders of that Panthers team, at least last year. Yeah, yeah your quarterback's always going to be the leader, but Steve Smith is, he has all those great leadership attributes, and you see him leading the team as he's doing with the Ravens right now. Right. And he's, he, you know, he's a possession receiver, a deep threat receiver, and I, I agree. I think letting and go he's of only him... Five Nine, that says a lot. Short guy. Yes. That's but a he's, testament to his ability. Yeah. Right. He's strong, though, and fast. That dude's tight. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can get back to Mark Sanchez, who did show poise in the pocket, who did, was able to be mobile, was able to, you know, find receivers downfield. It was actually a, more of like a short pass game all night. I think they, the total rushing yards for the Eagles was like 38 or something like that. Yeah, McCoy. It was short passes all night long. Right. Um, McCoy dropped a couple. Too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he didn't look totally on tonight. He, no. he didn't, but I mean, he didn't have to be on when you're up 31 to seven or whatnot. You know, in the third quarter, you you have to be on all the time. The well, so, end. Uh, no. Playing in the National Football League. So I agree. We talk, I agree. But seriously, like that's what you're getting paid like, all these umpteen millions of dollars to do: catch the ball, catch the ball, run right. your route, your fingers, hit your catch numbers. You need to catch it. Right. So uh, well, they're human as well. They're gonna make mistakes and drop passes because that's right. A part but that's of the, a mistake rather than he didn't need to play because they were winning. Right. Well, just right. just have to bust. I'll up. put it like this: if they were down by seven points in the third quarter, I'm sure you would have seen a whole nother Lashawn McCoy in there, a hungry, aggressive. The beastie, LaShawn McCoy. Why are you going to risk injury? Or, that, like, that's why they yeah, took... don't cast the ball. Why risk injury? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not saying that's why he purposely dropped the ball. Oh, okay. I'm not going to catch this ball. You kind of just said that. Right. You kind of just said if they were losing, he would have caught the ball. So he's like, oh, we're winning. I don't want that snap. Let me this. have the ball. He could throw it to someone else. I can get else. tackled wrong on this play and get hurt. Nah, hey, I'm not going to catch this one. <laughs> Behind what I would say was Sean McCoy, his rushing yards would have been higher had they been down because they would have looked to him to carry the team. They didn't have to look to LaShawn to carry the team, so therefore his stats are not um, indicative of that. You know, so <laughs> you went the there from dropping the ball, but I'll give you that. <laughs> you know what? I almost say is this. Anyways, <laughs> we, we what is the record of the Jets? <laughs> we talked about that. Quiet over there. We made our point. We talked about uh, Mark Sanchez. He had a great night, but what I want to know is Chip Kelly's system that good 
that it doesn't really matter what quarterback is in there, they will be successful? Uh, no, because you did not see that with Matt Barkley during the preseason. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Barkley came in to, towards For the game. Well, to, to like do a nail down. One play, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. they were winning. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't agree. And this is where I will give Sanchez credit. You know, he's a good enough quarterback to excel in that Sorry. system. Because Chip Kelly runs a very quarterback-friendly um, up-tempo offense. Whereas if you're a decent quarterback, you will excel in it. You can't throw anybody. You can't yeah. throw Geno Smith into that system and expect them to, you know, I to think put it, a point. Like, but. Mark Sanchez wants that. I think if he would have got that, you know, at the just. And I think also something that he said too was as frustrating as it was for him last year, as all a Jets fan last year. Him sitting on the sideline and watching for a year, because he was pretty much out the whole season. Was, yeah. It it helped him, you know, head the game more. You know what I mean? Like learn it more, see it more. Because we know he left college early. You know what I mean? So he had that extra minute of like, okay, I got a couple years under my belt. Now I can step back. Yeah, take he should have stayed. He should have stayed. Yep, he should have stayed with Pete Carroll one more Not year. Not really, because he was a top five. He was a fifth overall draft pick. I mean, if you know you're a sure first round draft choice, why stay another year? But that's what happened to Barkley. Exactly. I mean, you're making Barkley a business. Barkley stayed his fourth year. Yeah. What ended up happening to him? Had he left after his junior year, he would have potentially been a first round top five pick. And yeah, you but, saw he's, he but he's Barkley. We're talking about Sanchez. It's two yeah. totally different quarterbacks. I, I mean, totally I agree with you. Players. I think, yeah, I think Barkley should have left after. I mean, look, Cam Barkley Newton, should have stayed, stayed that extra after, really. year. And Mark Sanchez should have stayed. Yeah. Well, also, I think another thing that kind of was a detriment to Mark Sanchez's growth and development as a quarterback was getting reaching success so early in his career. I mean, literally his first two years, his rookie and sophomore year, they, he took him to the AFC Championship both. So when you you have that much success that early on, you know, you, you don't really go through de the development and growing process and stuff because... You're, no, he got cold. He got a big head and he was doing right, like and they kind of spreads and he was like all over New York with this model, that model. I made like, it. He was like... Right, they kind of made mention of that. He got success so early. But all the quarterbacks, it's because it's New York. It's because him, he he fed into it. Like, a lot of quarterbacks that, that make it. Andrew Luck isn't doing that. And, I mean, not that it, it's the well, same exact situation. Well, uh, different. Andrew Luck well, Andrew actually. Andrew Ivy League a, a, guy. Exactly. And Andrew Luck went through the struggle. He didn't, He's also not as gifted right here. Uh, oh, for sure. <sighs> and the girl, you and the, are just. You know you would date. I'm, you would not date Andrew Luck? Yeah, oh, that pause. That pause. Yeah, you that saw pause. that pause. Well, that guy she wants to be real. I, yeah, I um, think he's a smart guy, and I, I, you know, appreciate that in a suitor. But no, she it wouldn't said be a suitor. <laughs> suitor. Anyway, this is a medieval time. Like, but what I'm look. saying is, it has nothing to do with Mark Sanchez and his looks. I'm, I'm just saying, there's, there's certain players that will be like, I got to the championships. Next year, I want the Super Bowl. This is what I'm doing, and buckle down. Right, he study. got caught he, up like, in the hype. Kinda, and yeah. the, Look, Matt Leinard is the, the is, is, Matt, Matt Leiner is the poster Perfect boy for example. this. Okay, Matt Leinard, the USC Trojans at that time with Reggie White. Yeah, I mean, Reggie, sorry, Reggie, uh, Reggie Bush, Bush. Reggie Bush, Linda Lindell White, White. Yeah. were so dominant. Yeah. yeah, they were so superior to everybody else in football. Killing it as a quarterback. There was no way he was going to develop and grow to get the skills that was necessary for him to be successful in the NFL. Exactly. It just wasn't going to happen. And I think that was the worst thing that could happen. And that's just an extreme example of this kind of a Sanchez situation. These guys yeah. were these guys are really good. Yeah, he was a little more challenged. You know, he had a little little more challenge than than, than Liner did, but he still needed to stay another year. He needed that extra field time to to play. Those guys had way better careers than. It Barkley. was almost like everything was just handed to Sanchez. Yeah, it, it kind of was. That, you know, that's the pass what was kind of like handed. He Plus, he's the first Latin American like quarterback with this whole. Hey, was like, it Vinny Testaverde? Before, uh, Vinny Testaverde is Italian. I knew that, but still. I was like, Anyways. Vinny Testaverde? Are you serious? That's not. I was making That's the man That's all. That is all. That is all. Um, My cousin Vinny. Now, if Sanchez would have... <laughs> No, you didn't. Now, if Sanchez would have came out and got hurt his first year and sat on the bench and then still been a Jet, would have been a whole different ballgame. Like, I feel like he did. It was like he had to be humbled a little bit and knocked off the pedestal a little bit, you know which what? has happened. Jeff so Garcia. Sorry, go ahead. Jeff we, Garcia, we I think, was he's not. Is what? He, his last name Garcia. I think he has some Latin. No, he does. But uh, Mark Sanchez is Mexican, I believe. Oh, okay. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I don't think Jeff Garcia was Mexican. Uh, I think it was of Latin uh, descent, uh, but not Mexican. Uh, anyway. Sorry. Fact, let's go look ahead. It up. Go ahead. Let's By the way, Jeff up. Garcia, 49er player. Go ahead. Pro Bowl what, 49er where? player. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus. What the freaking 49ers. <clears throat> I totally forgot what I was talking about now. But, yeah, he got everything handed to him. So yep. he, and now he knows that he has to work for stuff. I think he got knocked off the pedestal a little bit. And I hope he comes back. I always liked him. I really I liked him until I didn't. And that means I liked him until it was the GQ and it was this and it was yeah. that. Because he came in hungry to play. And then it was like he got on the field. And they even said it tonight, like, when they were interviewing him when he was playing. It was like his eyes were open more. He was, like, he used to have the Jets, like, walk onto the field, like, slouched and hunched and not, like, care. And he, like... Like, was on the field like let's go you know like he was let me just, tell you something you gotta, let me tell you something about being from southern california southern uh -oh. california there's a lot of distractions out here okay oh, yeah. there's a lot of glamour in la i mean hey dwight howard tried it for a year didn't work out but he, he wanted to come to la yeah people love it out in los angeles and this kid mark sanchez is from here so playing at one of the premier historically great universities and doing great there and having the heritage that he has and everything. I mean, you got people who have Mexican flags on their cars and all this. I, actually, yeah, he is Mexican. I remember this. They had It was like a big deal. Yeah, Next thing Sanchez. you know, he's liking. Like you said, he's doing the magazine spreads. It's very easy to get caught up. Get and caught up. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're the man. He gets drafted. He goes to the Jets. Everything is, it starts off okay. And then now this kind of thing kind of dwindles into a butt fumble. Right. So now it's like, okay, let's bring things back to reality. Right? right? Now I'm not the man. I'm in Philadelphia. And I'm not. Starting. He has not been the man for two years in New York before he went exactly, to Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so so he got so, knocked off. So, he, he, so he's had a while to contemplate his situation, his career, what his legacy is going to be in the NFL, all this hype, and this is what you amount to. No player wants that. Yeah, It's different when you're a Romo and you come from nothing and now you make something of yourself. He's a, it's a win-win situation for Romo. If he never wins a Super Bowl, his story tells everything from where he came from to where he is now. But you can't have this this high expectation and then butt fumbling <laughs> well, <laughs> right i think so ryan, now, ryan so now, kid, uh, oh my relate. gosh that's another that's another story so now you have he has an opportunity to actually redeem a lot of those expectations in philadelphia right but, you but know, i also hope sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i yeah, also ahead. hope that he doesn't this is the first game he's started since i believe december 2012 i don't also hope that he because he started preseason, but he got hurt. Doesn't count. But I also hope that he doesn't be like, "Oh, I started. I can do this," and it doesn't get to his head in the same way. You know what I mean? Like if he would have just won the game tonight, or maybe lost by one touchdown tonight, but played well, he'd be like, "Okay, next week I got to strive for a little bit better. I got to strive for a little bit better. I got to strive for a little bit better." You give him forty-five points in the first time he starts a game again, like, is he going to get cocky and next week against the Packers, who are a way better team than the Panthers, suck? But what's who his knows? name is uh, hurt, right? What's Nick it? Foles. Foles. He's, he's out for he's the hurt. season, I think. Is he? Yeah, he's out for the season. He's out for the season? He's out for the season. Well, what's his injury again? Wow. Torn ACL. Yeah. Okay, so he's out for the season. Theoretically speaking, a guy is not supposed to lose his job to injury, right? So... Sanchez. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, Carson nah, Palmer is a torn yeah. ACL. Um, Foles is something like a collarbone. Oh, I think he broke his collarbone. But he's but out for the season. It's like a six to eight week. So he's out for a minute. Yeah. He's, I think he's out for the season. He's okay. come back by playoffs. Okay, so Sanchez, my whole point was Sanchez still has yeah. something to prove. He Bro still has to go in there. Broken collarbone. He has a broken yeah. collarbone. And Foles. The okay. average games missed were seven to ten. Which so. is. Okay, for a collarbone. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so. But they're in first place, so they might have more than seven games left. I mean, clearly they do, but they might have ten games left. Okay, well, Sanchez has to go in here, and he has to win the people over to him and actually... But that's what I'm saying. So hopefully this first win starting when he hasn't started for so long doesn't make him be like, oh, yeah, I'm starting again. I got this. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what we'll find out next week. Against Either he steps up and plays really well again, or... He proves he that. That's, my, that's my whole point. A starter's not supposed to lose a job to injury. So that should still be hovering over his head. And like, right, I didn't clearly I win this job. I'm just, I am just got the job. But him. you know what, though? You know what, though? 
Uh, my concern is this, and they we talked about it earlier with Mark Sanchez because when he was doing so well in the third quarter and stuff, the problem you saw him on the sidelines. He was laughing, he was playing around, he was joking with guys, playing. You know, if you see somebody like a Peyton Manning or Aaron Rodgers that's up, guess what? Peyton Manning's on the bench looking at plays, even right. if he's up by three or four touchdowns. Right. He takes that serious. Tom Brady, you won't see them playing around. So that was one of the things I did see from Sanchez tonight that was kind of reminiscent of his days back with the Jets. Mm. I know he was feeling good. But but I, I agree with you there, but every time he re-entered the game, it was laser focus. I didn't see him lose that focus when he got on the field. Right. Well, I mean, he but, didn't really have to do much in the second right. half. You know. But also, we do want to, I mean, I know, we got to think about it too. He came into the game last week, he threw two interceptions. This week, he started the game, he... It wasn't technically an interception because one of the guy's feet was out right. of bounds. Oh, that was but close. he did he did almost throw in an interception. Like, I don't know, that was the downfall of us. Like next week against the Packers who have a strong D, is he gonna throw four interceptions? Mm. Who knows? Right. So it's it's definitely going to be an interesting, really interesting game. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. to see the game next week. And I wanna know what you guys think. I mean, the NFC is pretty dominant. Um We've got a lot of top teams. NFC West, especially. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I want to know: Do you guys think? Okay, so they play. They they've already lost to the 49ers and the Cardinals. They beat the Rams. They have the Seahawks and the Cowboys coming up. Can they take down either of those teams? You, do you think the that Eagles? the Eagles are an, a legit contender for the NFC Championship? Well, I'll say this. First of all, the teams you mentioned were the Seahawks, the Niners, and what was the other team Well, no, they, they already lost to the Niners and the Cardinals. They beat the Rams. I'm talking strictly just NFC teams. Oh, just NFC teams. They okay. have the Cowboys and the Seahawks coming up. Well, the thing is with the Eagles, it's too, it's very premature to say whether or not they're an elite team. They're, are they hot right now? Of course they're hot right now. Anytime you're coming off a game where you absolutely demolish another team and, you know, your, your, your team was dominant offensively and defensively, you're hot. But I think it's just too early. I mean, they haven't really been tested. And when, and when I say tested, I mean with Mark Sanchez in as a starting quarterback. Obviously, yeah. they have played greater teams earlier in the year. But the yeah. current roster, I, I, it's hard for me to say after this um, the performance tonight whether or not they belong to be an elite team in the NFC, you know. <coughs> Time will tell. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, and again, it's like again, Sanchez was handed a six and two team. Exactly. Right. He so inherited we'll a pretty damn we'll good see. situation. Yeah. Right. And you know, let's let's just hope that because this is really this is Sanchez's. He's right now. He's he's auditioning for a starting role. If not yep. for the Eagles, for another team. Because I think he's just on a one year contract, right? I'm With not sure, Eagles. but this yeah, this but, is his opportunity. Yeah. What, either he takes it's it go, and grabs it, or he's never playing anywhere else, or become a Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> revamps his career, or yeah, he just falls back into that whole you know mess right. that he was in before. And yeah, so, so I just found out. Okay, Garcia. It says is of Mexican and oh, Irish look. heritage. See, so I was right. So is he's it? Mexican and Irish. So I didn't mean to say Benny Testaverde. I meant to say Jeff Garcia. That's what it was. But I'm not sure really if they similar. consider it like <laughs> if he. I'm not. I think Mark Sanchez is full Mexican. I, I, I forget the ethnicities. So but that's, let's that's no, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, there's something that was brought up. I'm just. Right. No, thank you for checking that. Thaddeus. Yeah, Appreciate fact. it. Um, another know. fun fact. <laughs> another. Um, I love you, Thaddeus. Another fun fact that's a little bit um, outrageous to actually believe, but uh -oh. the NFC South is so horrible that the Panthers really still have a chance to yeah. be number one in wow. that division. Yeah. Go Cam. Nobody in that division is over 500. I don't think anyone is even at 500. That is so well, no, the, the no, Bucks, New Orleans is the in Bucks first place with are four one and eight. The Bucks are one and eight and still have a chance. They're so the, three games out, you know? Did you, say the, did you say the Bucks still have a chance? Uh, well, that's that, really it's big obviously it's a big stretch, but yeah. that's just to show you how bad <laughs> that division is. Yeah. Right. When, when you've got some historically good teams at least obviously the Panthers we just talked about this last year were very good right. um, you know the Saints historically good team very good. you saw what they almost did to the Niners. right yeah. so who's their quarterback again the Saints <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> 
Jared lost for worse. Kevin John. No, no way. No, I, I, the Saints. Who is the Saints quarterback? I'm just the guy that came from the Chargers. Number nine. Wow. You guys can't feel even, that? You can't feel even that? say his name. There's a breeze coming That's through horrible. here. Oh. <laughs> There's a breeze coming through here. Right. So yeah, they're doing pretty bad. Do you guys think that the Panthers are actually going to make it into the playoffs? No. Because of, no, because <sighs> of the just overall weakness of the NFC South? Well, first of all, I, I, honestly, I don't know what they, the Panthers, their schedule is like uh, for the duration of the season. I would obviously well, play a factor. Well, up next they have the Falcons. Okay, well that that can be a easy a, a W, but you know I think I think with the Panthers, I the problem with the win like or a defeat like this is you know you lose confidence. You know you go in, Cam, you know was clearly dis he just looked discombobulated sometimes. So it's whether or not they can really bounce back from this, gain the confidence that they need, and you know go forward. So to answer your question, will they be, make the playoffs? Right now, I would say it's not likely. I think New Orleans is going to be the team out of the NFC South to go. I think so, too. Um, I I want to see what the Panthers, like, like you said, you know, the Falcons, it should be a win for them. Mm -hmm. But the Falcons are kind of in the same boat as the Panthers right now. They have a good team. I'd say the Falcons probably have a better team than the Panthers, but they just can't figure out what to do. Oh, they can't the figure Falcons out what to do. I know, so and it's sad. talent too. Right, Falcons that's what I'm saying. So that's talent. what I'm saying. Is just it's shocking that so that Jets. division overall is just. So they actually do have some. And so by, bad. By the way, we didn't even give a shout out today to one of you know Mark Sanchez's most critical weapons, who also happens to be a cousin of Jerry Rice. Big. San Francisco 49 are great, but it's Jordan Matthews. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I think Rookie. you know we have yet to mention him, and I think he, him, and both Darren Sproles, another person we haven't really talked about. They both had really big games for the Eagles yeah. tonight, and they Sproles particularly was like the X factor. But um, Matthews, is, Matthews is right up there with him. Well, yeah. Sproles' numbers don't look very good but that 65 yard punt return, return yeah. touchdown obviously yeah ignited was Any kind of a knife down for eight yeah. yards yeah and Matt, he's not performing um, nearly Matthews as well as he gypped. did when he played in san diego was that yeah he's no. got jipped when he <laughs> with that nice pit he got down at like the half yard oh yeah, yeah no that was brent oh, Selleck. Actually, that was the tight end yeah, yeah it was Selleck. Selleck. Yeah. um but matthews seven receptions 138 yards two touchdowns he had a monster game i it felt like selling that was yes, the, that, was that the got touchdown. the touchdown. Yeah, it was Selleck. Selleck got the touchdown, but, but Matthews they called, called it back. the pass. Yeah. No, no, his knee went down. Or yeah. His, his knee went down on, on the like one the yard one line. Yard, yeah. Are we sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100% sure. That was Selleck, yeah. And then Sproles ran it in. Yeah. Or not, not Sproles, it or was McCoy. Was McCoy, yeah. Ran it in. But, um, <laughs> no, but it. I felt like Matthews and Sanchez had really good chemistry tonight. Mm -hmm. He just, you know, was able to fire passes off left and right to him. Matthews was catching everything. He had a really big game. On the other side of it, Kelvin Benjamin, the other rookie, you know, had a decent game. He is there's is in talks for the offensive rookie of the year award. Really? Mm hmm. Matthews. No, oh, Calvin sorry, Benjamin. I was I was Calvin Benjamin. Calvin, yeah, yeah. Calvin Benjamin is a is a. I mean, between him and um, Sammy Watkins, you know, another rookie electrifying receiver may go down to the both of them. Right. But um, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I you know, it was it was impressive all the way around. I mean, Chip Kelly, that's a high. He's I, an amazing coach. He, he saw really what he did is. At Oregon. At Oregon, he had what Mariota running about seventy plays, yeah, like right. ridiculous. Six, yeah. No huddle. I mean, it's just quick, 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 and straight yep. to it. Yep. And um, he, he's looking good. He's looking good. Yeah. See, I have it right here in the third quarter. Stuff. First pass attempt to Brent Selleck. I had written touchdown, and then I crossed it out down at the one yard line. Lashawn McCoy one yard touchdown. Um, but let's get into predictions, guys. Predictions. Yeah. Predictions. So we chose the Eagles. Yes. They we did. chose the Panthers. Yes. So I don't know what our our scores are. I think now. I'm winning. I think I am I'm too. Keeping track. Who knows? But um. <laughs> wait, Steph, so you keep wait, track? Kind of. So we who picked the Seahawks? <laughs> who be, the the Seahawks beat the Giants, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we sucked this week, dude. And you guys picked the, who'd you guys pick? Well, the Colts, but the Patriots had a bye, so we don't know that game yet. So we picked the Panthers and the Giants, so we both sucked that, and you guys both won. Air high five. 
Sorry. So, okay, Sorry, the man. Eagles play the business. Packers, and the Panthers play the Falcons. Um, the Eagles play the Panthers? No. Packers. No, you're talking about the Packers? Yes. The Eagles play the Packers. So, Thaddeus, I'll start with you. What are your picks for those two games? Where is it? At Packers, and Panthers are home against the Falcons. Panthers are home against the Falcons. Yes, and Eagles are in Lambeau. The Eagles are in Lambeau. And, okay. Hmm. I will pick the Packers to okay. win that game. Bring Mark Chance Sanchez down to size. <laughs> and the other game was... Panthers versus Falcons. The Panthers versus the Falcons in... Carolina. I picked the Falcons. All right. Kevin? Um, I'm going to usually go with the pack. I mean, Aaron, if you saw the way Aaron Rodgers just dismantled the Bears on yeah. Sunday night... He, that boy's on fire. Yep. He's an elite quarterback. Rogers. and Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think that even though the, the, the Eagles defense looks strong tonight, believe me, Aaron Rodgers will uh, humble that defense out. Sure I will. agree. So I'm going to pick the pack for that. And then uh, for the Falcons and the Panthers, that's a toss up because I really think a loss like this was kind of demoralizing for Cam. And he's a little injured. So, you know, just because I went to college in Atlanta, I'm going to go with the Dirty Birds. I'm no, because that's what birds. I picked. So you got to go with the winners. It's last week. You just. It's death. <laughs> I'm going to pick um, the Packers because I just. Aaron Rodgers, I mean, everything they all said. And I'm going to pick the Falcons because I'm a fan now from Hard too. Knocks. Well, I really what? want to, like, make different picks just because no, pick for the fun want. of it. But I, I agree with you guys. I want to go with the Packers and the Falcons as well. And then next Monday, we have the Steelers at the Titans. I'm going to take the Steelers. I'm gonna take the Steelers too. I think this 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 fluke loss. Who was that? They just Sorry. lost to the Jets, dude. That was a fluke loss. Yeah. You saw how the Steelers were rolling up until that point, and, and that's probably what happened. Mm-hmm. They Ben Roethlis two, two back to back six got big headed and just you know. And he did. He walked into the game. He's like, I'm playing the Jets. He got now. that Sanchez yeah. syndrome. He got the Sanchez syndrome. Man. Okay, just... so who, 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 wait, who are they playing? <laughs> are you listening at all? I'm just. I'm the like, Steelers at the Titans. At the Titans. Okay, it's at the Titans. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't know. Let them go first on this one. Go this way. Daddy, are you drunk tonight, man? No, I'm actually not. <laughs> he's, he's drunk on love. I'm going to yes. take the Steelers, too. Like so it, it, We've all win. It's your turn. We all pick the Steelers. Who you got? Who you pick? You pick the Steelers, Tina Cap. Yeah. I mean, who do the Titans have? And they're playing in Tennessee? Yeah. But still. Yeah. Okay. Steelers. I'll pick the Steelers. Sweet. All right. Well. Even though they lost to the Jets. It was a fluke, like Kevin said. It was a fluke. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. (laughs) We'll see. I mean, we got a bye week. Now we're going to have two weeks to to? look up together. You know what we won't see? Oh, geez. What are we We not going to see? We won't see those glove pop pops. We won't see those glove pop pops for all the rest of the season. You're jealous you don't have them. You want to make a bet? We'll at least win one more game. What do you want to bet? Tattoo? I, I, no, definitely not. That's, that's a Super Bowl. Oh, you missed he, it. He bet if you the Jets it. make it to the Super Bowl this year, he's going to get a tattooed on his neck. A Rex Ryan. What? That's a right. Rex Ryan, yeah. If they make it. Pinky okay, you guys, tell everyone where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at HeyKevinJohn or on my website, it's KevinJohn.com. You guys can find me on Instagram as Twitter as well, at I am Step Z with an F. Go to my Instagram and Twitter, click on a link in the bio and vote for me. I want to see the Jets like go now, just so I can yeah, see Kevin John get this damn tattoo. I, I know, right? Boom. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tina Cap. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Do it. Do it. Later. Yeah, later. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.